Uh, welcome, we're glad to have you. And over to you, Mr. Moss. Great, so thanks for the intro, Daniel. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Dan Moss here, I'm a technical director on the observability team at Roblox. Uh, I'm gonna speak about how observability helps engineers monitor their critical systems here and the role that Grafana plays in that architecture. Uh, first, uh, for those of you who may not know what Roblox is, just a quick intro to our platform. Uh, users create an account and then they create and customize a 3D avatar. Then they network together with their friends and together they can join any one of hundreds of thousands of interactive 3D experiences. Uh, and I should point out all of these experiences are not created by Roblox. They're created by developers uh, who build on top of our platform. And I'll just play a quick clip here that shows what it looks like when you join one of these 3D worlds in Roblox. Um, many of them are games, but that's not all we have. Uh, there's plenty of social experiences, educational experiences, concerts, uh, anything from a ninja battle to a tea party there's probably an experience that, that delivers that on Roblox. So what role does observability play here? Um, for us, the job of the observability tool set is to help engineers understand and improve the reliability of our systems, the performance, and also understand resource utilization. Are we getting the best out of the, uh, the data center resources we have? And how do we accomplish that? We break it down into four steps. Uh, we want to collect this information from the sources that generate it. We need to store that somehow. We need to visualize it. And then we need to act on it, uh, which could be anything from uh, reacting to a pager duty alert to doing detailed tuning using a dashboard. Uh, and as an example, uh, here's a dashboard we built to visualize the health of our orchestration system. Um, we had a rather bad outage last October that took down the site for, for quite a while. And coming out of that, we realized we needed more powerful tools to help us understand, um, it, are our systems healthy? Are they in a degraded mode so that we can react to problems before it impacts our users? Now, Roblox has some pretty stiff challenges when it comes to observability. Uh, there's a huge amount of surface area to the product. We're operating at very high scale, and our backend includes several generations of technology working alongside each other. Uh, let me get into a little more detail here. So uh, as I mentioned, Roblox consists of these interactive 3D experiences, but those experiences are filled by user-generated content. There's also a social element where players group together in friends and there's chat and notification features. In order to keep this platform safe for all ages, we have very deep trust and, and safety systems uh, working behind the scenes. Uh, we support a full economy that involves payments and virtual currency. All of this runs on data centers that we've built on a large network, including a custom CDN. So our product encompasses all these different areas that each have different requirements on, on our observability tools. It's a, it's a very challenging problem. Another issue we have is our high scale and how quickly we're growing. Um, as of the end of last year, we had about 45 million daily active users. We serve those users with a global set of data centers and also smaller edge locations uh, for higher performance and lower latency. Um, among all these sites, the biggest ones have well over 10,000 hosts in them. Uh, so we face a pretty significant scale challenge. <laughs> so when we turn on any new system at Roblox, this is what day one looks like. Um, you know, unlike a, a smaller company that would have the luxury of confronting scaling challenges uh, one at a time, uh, we're sort of faced with a fire hose of telemetry data for any new system we turn on. Uh, which uh, makes our life more difficult. Uh, oh, and at the same time, where our back end, as I mentioned, uh, encompasses different generations of technology. It's evolved over more than a decade. Uh, it began life in the kind of Windows C Sharp world. Uh, now we use Linux for a great deal of our back end, but there's still cooperation between these uh, older and newer systems. 
we also use a combination of uh, a sort of monolithic code and containerized code. So our observability tools need to work in this environment. Um, so uh, it's difficult to apply a one size fits all approach because it's so diverse. Let me talk about where our observability journey started and then I'll get to where we are and where we're going. Uh, in the beginning, each team took responsibility to build its own observability stack. Uh, a lot of teams saw their own needs and came up with a one off custom solution that would just cover what their team needed. Um, as a result, as you look across the organization, um, there was a zoo of different technologies in use. Um, this is just a subset of the ones uh, that we have. For instance, um, there are teams that use traditional Prometheus Grafana stacks. Uh, our application team uh, had a custom metrics infrastructure built using a C Sharp library they wrote, storing data in uh, Dynamo for their time series DB. Um, so just a whole hodgepodge of, of different technologies in use. And that kind of created some pain points for us. So let me let me get into the drawbacks of our old way of doing things. Um, first of all, because each of these teams has a different primary responsibility, they weren't able to build deep expertise in observability, uh, whether it's networking or orchestration or, or economy, they have their own job to do and observability is just something they need to take care of on the side. So they developed limited, there was a limited ability to manage and tune these systems. And when it came to requirements like how do we do backups? Uh, how do we satisfy our auditing policy? Uh, how do we handle high availability? And what happens when a new data center turns on? Uh, these kinds of concerns were difficult to deal with because the teams uh, were specialized in something else. We also have an issue of inconsistent data schemas between all of these different systems. For example, uh, some systems use host, some use host name. Uh, there's also disagreement on what exactly is a data center here. Um, is it defined by location? Is it defined by uh, fault isolation zone and, and so on? So it made it very difficult to write queries or join data between these different systems because they didn't align on a common vocabulary. And finally, getting back to that day one scale challenge, uh, we encountered some very serious bottlenecks around service discovery. Um, most of our older telemetry systems are pull based where um, you know, thousands of containers start up and we have the, we face the complexity of uh, carrying that information of what containers we have running to the metric system that's going to be recording metrics from them. That became a very serious performance bottleneck because of our scale. And these factors were a uh, contributor to our big outage in October. So now let's talk about where we are and where we're going. We're evolving towards a centrally managed telemetry platform. And here's a picture of roughly what it looks like. Um, instead of each team building its own stack, we're centralizing the observability function on our team and then using many tools, uh, Grafana prominently among them, to bring in the data and visualize and act on it centrally. So what advantages does that give us? Well, first of all, we have a common schema. We can align all the different sources of data on common definitions of host name, data center, et cetera. We can work towards that mythical single pane of glass, uh, or at least a single uh, Grafana instance to find your metrics data. Uh, because this is a dedicated team, we can also invest in a, a high availability and high performance and apply those investments across all of our observability customers. I'm now going to zoom in on just one piece of this unified architecture. I'm going to zoom in on the collection part of it. And Grafana Agent plays a big role in the collection of data. So let me get into how useful that tool is. Grafana Agent allows us to replace legacy metrics collectors with one simple tool. It's got some great advantages, like it's a single Golang binary with a simple configuration file. So it's very, very easy to deploy. It has powerful features to relabel and filter metrics data so that we can, as we transition from a legacy system to our unified system, uh, we can preserve compatibility by renaming or tweaking things to match the way the data used to look. 
Uh, and it also supports both Windows and Linux. As I mentioned, we have different generations of technology in use and we need to monitor all of it. Here's just a quick peek under the hood of Grafana Agent showing some of the functionality we're using. Um, you can configure the agent to do traditional Prometheus style scraping of a list of URLs. You can have it talk to console to discover container endpoints to scrape. And in addition, in that single binary, it's also got embedded um, integrators like Node Exporter and Windows Exporter that can gather deep telemetry system uh, from the operating system. So Grafana Agent consolidates all of that data and then can send it out through the Prometheus Remote Write protocol. And here's a picture of um, a typical system at Roblox. That green box represents one machine with Grafana Agent running on it. So Grafana Agent is sitting there collecting telemetry data from the operating system underneath it, as well as the containers and the orchestrator above it. And then it's shipping that data out uh, through a, to time series databases that we can then visualize inside of Grafana. Um, one key advantage of this, because Grafana Agent is so flexible, we can configure it to write metrics to more than one destination. Um, in our case, we use a dual write strategy where we preserve two copies of all of our critical data so that if there's a failure in one, we can just keep on operating with the other. I'm now going to zoom into the visualization part where we use the Grafana UI. Um, we love this UI because we can bring together dozens of different data sources. Uh, we can use Prometheus compatible data sources. We can link in Elasticsearch to look at logs. Uh, we can link in SQL databases. We're really happy that there's a strong open source community behind Grafana. So uh, anytime we spin up a new system, there's probably already a dashboard out there that somebody's written that we can bring in and, and adapt to our needs. Grafana has some great flexible APIs for editing dashboards that we use as, as part of our automations. And finally, we are very happy about our partnership with Grafana Labs. Uh, they've been very responsive, whether it's performance tuning, bug fi fixes, or feature requests. Uh, we appreciate their, their support. And here's an example. This is just a shot of a dashboard we built to monitor our orchestration system following the October outage. Um, thanks to our new high availability architecture, uh, there were a couple of much less severe kind of near miss incidents that happened after that, but we were able to catch those incidents and prevent them from spreading because of this new high availability tool we had. There's some other benefits we gain from centralizing uh, knowledge and uh, about the observability platform here at Roblox. So our team can invest deeply in understanding uh, what are good trade-offs when it comes to choosing data retention versus data resolution? Um, how do we optimize our queries? And where it, and when is it appropriate to do things like use pre-caching with recording rules or shard data between multiple databases? Um, this is our bread and butter, and so we can invest, and then all teams at Roblox that are our customers can benefit from that. And finally, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about where we want to take this system in the future. Um, first of all, we're very excited by the ability that Grafana Agent now has to receive configuration updates dynamically. Uh, we've had many other teams in Roblox come to us because they're excited about plugging into Grafana Agent and deprecating their own uh, kind of one-off telemetry tools. So it's going to become very convenient for them to plug in uh, by updating our configuration using the, the APIs that Grafana Agent ships with now. Um, we're also looking at building a GitOps workflow for Grafana dashboards. Uh, this is very important when we're operating at Roblox scale because we want to have a standard process for um, reviewing updates to our dashboards and making sure that all service teams have the best version of everything all the time. Uh, we're also interested in uh, building a telemetry architecture that includes our edge locations. Uh, most of what I just spoke about applies to our core data center, but we've also got edge locations around the world that we would love to bring into this unified platform. Uh, and finally, we're always looking at better options for database storage. We're very excited about the Mimir announcement because we're reaching the limits of our current time series architecture. Uh, and so we'd like to explore what are some better ways that we can manage the huge amount of data we're dealing with. So 
So I'd like to give thanks to all the engineers who contributed to this work on my team, including the co-leaders, uh, Ing Dai, Amit Gupta, Shoku Wan, our director, Xiaofeng Han, and our VP, Max Ross. Thank you for your support.